Red Rock Canyon is a national conservation area located west of Las Vegas, Nevada. This space is full of sedimentary rock, which have created small canyons and valleys, such as Calico Basin, and a mountain range called the Spring Mountains. You can learn a whole lot about the geologic history of the area by observing the rock's color, texture, and location, so let's take a look at Red Rock Canyon. During the Paleozoic era, much of what is now the western United States was underwater. For more than 200 million years, the landscape was dominated by hard-shelled and bony sea creatures. Over time, as the marine life died, their bones would begin to accumulate on the sea floor. Because of the great volume of remains, a process called lithification occurred. Lithification is a process where loose sediment is converted into rock. As the pressure on top of the sediments increases from more sediment being deposited, for example, the sediments compact. Because of the crate pressure from overlying deposits, the sediments eventually compact into hard rock. In this case, the rock that formed was limestone, made up of the bones and shells of the sea life that once flourished in the area. You can observe plenty of limestone in Red Rock Canyon. Aside from the large outcrops at the top of hills, there are plenty of smaller rocks lying around on the trails. The limestone is mostly dark gray, but if you look closely, you can find plenty of lighter fossils. You can find the largest amounts of limestone towards the north end of the park. That's where the mountains of limestone are also located. Later on, during the Mesozoic era, the ocean dried up and the region became a desert. The desert landscape was dominated by sand dunes. Just as we saw with the marine life's remains, these loose sand sediments also underwent lithification. This time, it formed sandstone. There's a lot of sandstone at Red Rock Canyon, and it's pretty easy to spot because the color stands out compared to the dark limestone that surrounds it. Looking at the sandstone, we can observe another geologic process called crossbedding. Crossbedding occurred due to the wind sweeping across the sand dunes. The wind would blow particles to the top of the dune, and they would fall down and form a layer called a bedding plane. Over time, many of these bedding planes would build up, leaving observable lines in the rock. Looking at the sandstone here, the black lines indicate the bedding planes, and the white lines are called crossbeds. The crossbeds show us the direction that the wind was blowing in, and by looking at the entire rock here, you can see the way that the wind's direction shifted over time by the sets of parallel lines on the rocks. Crossbeds can be found all over sandstone in Red Rock Canyon. In fact, there's crossbedding on almost all of the tan-colored sandstone in the area. It's really easy to find. This conservation area is called Red Rock for a reason, though. Many of the sandstone outcrops also contained iron oxides. As the rocks were exposed to the elements, over time, the iron minerals oxidized or rusted. This resulted in the rocks turning red, orange, and brown. The lighter colored sandstone did not have iron oxide deposits, so it remained a sandy color. In some places, the iron was clearly deposited in layers. However, there are other places on the lighter sandstone where iron has become concentrated due to water precipitating it there. These small concentrations also oxidized, creating red spots in the sandstone. You can even see in some places that the iron concentrations were more easily eroded by the elements, and the spots have become small holes. When sedimentary rock is formed, the oldest rock is usually at the bottom, as that's where the pressure is greatest and lithification occurs first. When looking at the geologic time of Red Rock Canyon, it would make sense to expect the younger sandstone to be on top of the older limestone. While that may have once been true, there are actually some places in Red Rock Canyon where the older limestone is on top of the sandstone. So how did the older rock get on top of the younger rock? The answer can be found by looking at the tectonic forces that used to play in the region. About 65 million years ago, towards the end of the Mesozoic era, the tectonic plate underneath the Pacific Ocean began subducting, or moving underneath, the North American plate. This led to compressive forces, which created the Sierra Nevada mountain range. This range also created compressive forces that acted towards the east of the range. This led to faulting near modern-day Nevada. When there are sufficient compressive forces on a rock, it can create a fault or break. 
the rock on top then moves up relative to the rock underneath it. This is called a reverse fault. One type of reverse fault is a thrust fault. This is a reverse fault that has an angle less than 45 degrees. As you can see, it has the potential to move older rock layers on top of much younger ones. Red Rock Canyon is an excellent example of a thrust fault. The red and black lines on the map here mark the end boundary of what is called the Keystone Thrust Fault, where the older limestone meets the younger sandstone. The fault is moving this way, and the red and tan sandstone formations that were shown a few minutes ago are located here. The limestone moved in from the northwest and in some places is now on top of the sandstone. For example, looking at the outcrop from the south, the 500 million year old darker limestone is clearly on top of the younger sandstone, and you can observe the same phenomenon around the park and also from far away. On the other side of the canyon is the Sprague Mountains. These mountains are also made of sandstone, but the thrust fault is causing the limestone to be moved on top here as well. These mountains are located here on the map, and you can see pretty clearly from satellite imaging where the limestone has moved on top of the sandstone. In fact, if you arrive or depart from Las Vegas in a plane, you can see the thrust fault from the air. This is a picture I took last time I flew out of Las Vegas. Even if you can't visit the area though, you can still find many good pictures online. I hope that you learned something new and interesting about Red Rock Canyon. It's absolutely my favorite place to visit, and I highly recommend checking it out if you're ever in southern Nevada. It has a lot of short and easy trails that you can observe many different geologic processes from almost everywhere in the park. But even if you never go there, hopefully you were able to see plenty of it in this video.